Well, good evening, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a pleasure to be on here with you tonight, guys. We're going to get into some heavy-duty stuff. Uh, I'm just excited to be on here. I'm so thankful to God for what he's doing, man. I'll tell you what. God loves you more than you'll ever know God loves you. I mean, he loves us so much. That's why he gave his son for us. Amen. We're going to talk about being empowered to overcome. Because God wants you to overcome, amen? And I want you to know that he wants you to overcome. So we'll talk about that tonight. I'm kind of laid back and relaxed in the way I'm dressed, you know, not a coat and all that on. I've been running all day, you know, working, doing what God has my wife and I doing. So hope you don't mind the way I look. Praise the Lord, amen? I did take a shower, though, and get cleaned up for you. So that much I did do, amen? Hi, Tina. God bless you. Pleasure to have you on here. We'll give people a few minutes because I I got started probably about five minutes earlier than I should have. Uh, but I wanted to get on here. I really was. I was excited about tonight to get on here and bring forth the Word of God and help a lot of people to get free. Guys, I am getting all kinds of people contacting me about the books. Uh, Tina, all you guys, thank you so much for sharing uh, with people about our books. It helps us a lot to get the Word out. And I'm getting a lot of people whose lives are being changed, but I'll be honest with you, man. I've been getting a lot of uh, people talking about last night's message i'm hearing a lot of people say a lot about last night's message uh which is which is which is really good i mean it's it's a great thing there's nothing wrong with it it's just i just think it's interesting how many people are, are talking about last night's message uh taking your thoughts captive and like i said you know believe it or not the things you've done in your life just like mine things i've done in my life are the very things that has brought us to where we're at in our life. Uh, just to let everybody know, I don't know why, but I just spent time today on Facebook, or not Facebook, but YouTube, working with a crew to find out why my YouTube wasn't working. And we went through and did a test, and it was working fine again, and now it's not working. So I don't understand that. I do apologize. What I will have to do is I will have to put the video up afterwards. After we get done on Facebook, I'll load it up on YouTube for those that want to watch it. Because I have several people that do, they do not have a Facebook account. They only have a YouTube account. You can also, like I say, get us on YouTube, guys. But you can get us on Periscope. you got Janet's page and a lot of people go to it. The main page is where I'm at right now. It's right where I'm at. Did a, a lady named get, get a hold of you or Janet? Uh... No, not yet. If she has, it wasn't me. She possibly could have got a hold of Janet, guys. But we've been running all day. We've been ministering all morning to people left and right. So if Janet spoke to that person, I don't know. We have not had a chance to talk about it. So that doesn't mean that she hasn't, though. It just means that I, I don't know if she's talked to her. Yeah, let me say this. Uh, if you want the books... Uh, and I'll allow me to just go on and do what I do here to make sure I get it up here correctly to help you out. But if you want the books, okay, and a lot of the book, is, the book that's probably being talked about a lot right now is Exposing the Secrets of the Heart. Uh, if you like that book, please, it's better to contact me personally. Amen. Bless you, Brother Jeff. Uh, it's better to contact me personally. And the reason I say that is this. You can get the book at Barnes & Noble. You can get all of our books there. You can get our books at uh, on Amazon. You can buy our CDs on Amazon. You can buy our stuff at other places. We just always recommend that you buy our books from us. What happens is, guys, and I'm just being very real with you because you asked me, so I'm going to tell you. When you buy the book from these, these platforms, they get 90% of your money. It doesn't matter where you go, who they are. They just get all your money. So if you buy the book directly from us, the ministry is going to get seven and probably about 50% of it, maybe 60% of it, because you got to consider paying for the books and shipping and all that. So we'll get about 60% 60 of the book, which is good. That beats getting $2. And we'll mail it out to you. I had a, Jeremy on here the other day, got a book. He ordered it with us. I went out the very next day and mailed it out to him. He got a good deal on the book. He saved about probably $10, about $7.00. And buying it through the ministry, and the ministry got most of the money. So if you desire to have the books, that's great. We'd love for you to buy them. Uh, if you're not serious about your walk, then I'll tell you, my books are not the books to order. 
I'm just being real. I don't mean that in an arrogant way. I'm just saying I deal with the heart. I deal with the pe people think. I deal with the foundation. I'm a foundation guy. So I deal with the things. I want to get you to be the greatest you can be in Jesus Christ. And the best way to do that is I'm going to deal with your foundation. And make sure it's not shaky. Amen? You hear what I'm saying? So you can get any of the books. Uh, they're all there. They're all available for you. We'd love for you to, you know, to get them. Uh, so please, take the time and, and get our books. We'd love to have you get them. That's the main thing. Because those books will help change your life. Amen? I uh, do want to tell you the next book coming out, which will be out December, which is really, really one I'm excited about. Uh, it's called uh, Changed by His Glory. And I'll tell you what, it will change your life. It's a good book. What I did is I wrote about six men. Amen. I wrote about six men whose life got changed in the Old Testament, or the Bible, I should say, New and Old. And then I wrote about six men whose lives were changed in the 21st century. So I want you to realize that. So you're looking at six men in the in the uh, the Old Testament and New Testament whose lives were changed. And then you're going to look at six men whose lives were changed in the 21st century. So I have them in there. I'm not going to tell you who they are. You just got to get the book. But I will say this. Uh, Dr. Mark Sherwood's a good friend of mine. He, he forwarded the book and also did uh, Sam Hinn, Benny Hinn's brother. Also a good friend of mine, and he also uh, put a forward on the book. So please order the book. I think you'll like it. Uh, the people that I have that stand behind what we put out are very good friends, and they know what we preach. And if you've listened to me long enough, you know what I preach. Amen. I, I pretty much, if you don't want to walk with Jesus, I'm not the guy. <laughs> I'll tell you that straight up. Amen. Because we're going to preach in power and demonstration and let the Holy Ghost move, man. We see people set free, delivered, healed by the power of God. So we want nothing but the best for you. So you got to know that. Amen. So now let's let's get back to what I was saying. If you want the book, order it directly from Messenger to Fire Ministries. All you got to do is call us. Phone number is 417-396-8295. We're easy to get a hold of. Amen. All you got to do is call us. But I want to talk to you tonight because I've been dealing with people, uh, or teaching, I should say, to people on basically dealing with your thoughts. I tell people, guys, there's five voices, okay? You have the voice of God, the voice of your conscience, the voice of reasoning, the voice of your flesh, and the voice of the devil. And you will listen to the, the Lord on the top or the devil on the bottom, depending on what you do in the middle. If you're feeding your flesh, now let me just say it this way. If you're feeding your flesh with the things of the world, then you're going to always lean towards the enemy. You know what I'm saying? You're always going to lean that way. So you have to understand that. So, like I said, tonight I want to talk about in, being empowered to overcome. God wants you to be a success. I see so many Christians struggling in their walk. God doesn't want you to struggle in your walk. I was, uh, I was out last night at a brother in the Lord's house, and I was ministering. And I had three or four guys there, and as I was ministering, I had a couple guys hooked on cigarettes and different things that were going on in their lives. And and you got to understand addictions, but you got to also understand cravings. We all have cravings. I use the word cravings because it's in Scripture. Amen? It's a really, really good word. It really is. It's a good word to use because it deals with, we want to deal with the cravings in our lives. Amen? And we all have cravings. And so we want to deal with those cravings because those cravings are, are a big deal. Whether you believe it or not, they're really a big deal. Those cravings are what's going to get you to do certain things you shouldn't do and keep you from doing certain things you should do. Amen? For example, let me just make some basics here to give you some understanding, okay? I want you to realize what I'm saying because I want you to walk in freedom, okay? Please listen to me. I had bronchitis. I don't, I don't have it anymore. I used to have pleurisy. God freed me from pleurisy. I used to wear glasses. I have 20-20 vision. I'm 61 years old, guys, and I got 20-20 vision. I don't use, I have no cholesterol problems. I don't have no high blood pressure. By the grace of God, and I boast in God, by the grace of God, I'm in perfect health by the grace of God, and only by the grace of God. Amen? So I want you to understand that. 
I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to help you. I'm not here to see you fail. I'm here to see you to be a success. On the door of our ministry, it says, taking the people of God and making them the leaders of tomorrow. God wants you to be the best him you can be. You know, I said he wants you to be the best him you can be. And that's critical. Amen. So I want you to understand that. That I want you to like, for example, go to in your Bible, go to Hebrews chapter 4, and I want to look at verse 15 and 16. Now we're going to get in some pretty deep and heavy stuff. Amen. But I think what's happened over the years, I was just talking to a young man on the phone, and for some reason we have God looking up here like he's in, in, in the heavens, and he's got a great big bat. And he's wanting to beat you up. Well, first off, God isn't in heaven with a bat wanting to beat anybody up. Because if he did, we already, we'd already we lose anyway. So what would, be the, what would be the reason to do it? Second thing is, God is a very loving father. And he wants the best for you and me. But guys, we still make choices. Amen? And our choices are critical in our lives. Uh, by the way, do me a favor. Like I told you, Facebook has shut me down for share, from sharing to the 30th of this month. So if you would share to your pages or share to your groups, I would really appreciate that. I can do some sharing in Messenger, but I can't share to none of my groups. And I'm in hundreds of groups where I like to share because there's hundreds of thousands of people there. So if you would share, I would much appreciate it. Uh, just like the message last night, so many people contacted me saying, man, you nailed it. You, you were talking to me. You know what? I just preach what God tells me, and it's God talking to you, not me. Amen? You have to agree with me, guys, that apparently we're doing something wrong because we're not getting the results we were looking for. God wants you to get the results you're looking for. Please understand that. He wants you to get the results you're looking for. God wants you to be a success. God doesn't want you to fail in this walk with Him at all, under any circumstances. God never wants you to fail. When you, don't, when you don't do good, guess what? It don't just make you look bad. It makes God look bad. Why? Because he's our daddy. And he wants nothing but the best for you and me. So understand that. So look at, look at I'm going to make mine a little bigger here. I've got a, my notes on here, so I just make it a little bigger. So look what it says, he, Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. For in that he himself have suffered being tempted. Now I want you to listen to what you're reading here. Paul's trying to make a very important point to us. Okay, and I'm going to go slow. So it may take a little longer than normal, but I want you to get what I'm saying because I want you to walk away from here tonight victorious. I don't want you to be defeated by sin. I don't want you to be defeated by a devil. I don't want you to go around being tormented in your mind. I'm going to show you how to get free in your mind, your will, and your emotions. If you'll listen to me, and you will apply the principles I tell you and show you, I'm promising you, your life's going to change. Amen? Why? Because I'm teaching you what God showed me that changed my life. Amen? God is a God of peace. He who keeps his mind on God is kept in what? Perfect peace. So as Christians, we shouldn't be walking around here tormented all the time. We should be walking around in victory. I mean, if, you, if God isn't doing in you what you tell people he could do, and then I do what you say and it doesn't work. Why would I even want to follow the God you talk about? If all you're ever doing is being tormented, beat up, whooped on, and, and everything by a devil, why would I ever want the God you got? Think about what I'm saying. My wife made a statement to me one time. Uh, her and a friend was talking many, many years ago. Was talking about being in spiritual warfare with the devil. I, I just looked at her and, and kind of just, you know, nodded my head. And she said, what? I go, why are you fighting the devil that's already been defeated? And it clicked. She said, oh my God, I'm picking fights with the devil. Don't pick a fight with the devil that you've already, that God already defeated for you. Your, your fight is not against flesh and blood. Your fight and my fight is against spiritual battles, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Amen? So, so please understand, what I'm trying to show you is to get you in the place God wants you so you can be victorious. Amen? So if you kind of see me looking down the right, I'm seeing who's on on here. I see Jeff and Tina and different ones. And I'm sure they're on other platforms too. But I want you to realize that. Uh, and let me just say this. Those joining us by Periscope, we're so thankful you joined us tonight. God bless you. I pray, I pray that you'll take notes and you'll listen and pay attention. If you're on uh, joining me later on as I put it up on uh, YouTube, 
I pray there too that you will listen, take notes, and I thank you for joining us tonight. I pray, I pray that tonight convicts you and transforms you into the image of God. Amen. I want you to be victorious. Amen. So anyway, back to what I was reading. Let me make sure I'm reading in the right verse in the right place because I got several verses here. Uh, let me pull it up over here in my Bible thing just to make sure. I try to write everything down, but it doesn't always work that way. So I don't want to quote you one thing and then say another thing. All right. So the first place I'm going to read was Hebrews 2.18, and then I've got uh, Hebrews 4.15 and 16. I got them all bunched together here, okay? So Hebrews 2.18 says, because he himself suffered when he was tempted. Now listen, so he is able to help those who are what? Being what? Tempted. So think about what I'm saying here. This isn't me. This is what God said. He said, for, for in that he himself also suffered being tempted. He's able to what? Help them that are what? Being tempted. So God's already telling you that temptation's coming. We act like when we get saved and born again that there's no temptation that comes. That's foolishness. The war just begins. Remember, guys, trial and tribulation come for the sake of God's word. It's coming to see if what you meant was real. If you really love God with all your heart, are you just trying to make God your little genie in a bottle? Are you trying to make him a sugar daddy? Does that make sense? You know, we want to, you know, in different right? Oh, daddy can be, God can be my sugar daddy. Supply all my needs are, according to his riches and glory. That God wants to supply your needs according to his riches and glory, but he wants to transform you in his in image so you can walk in his glory. Amen? He wants to transform you in his image so you can walk in his glory. Amen? Hear what I'm saying. Don't shout me down for telling you the truth. I want you to see the truth. Amen? Okay, now go to uh, Hebrews 4. 15 and 16. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16. Amen. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of what? Infirmities. But was in all points tempted like as we are. Notice it says we are. That's, that's talking about right now. Okay. Like as we are. Yet without sin. So now he did it without, without sinning. Amen. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. Now grace is unmerited favor, but grace also means divine influence reflected in the life of the individual. So I need grace at the moment that sin's trying to overtake me, so I need the power of grace to conquer that sin. Okay? It's unmerited favor. Okay? And then I need that grace, which is the divine influence reflected in life, in my life, where the enemy is trying to get me to fall away from God, God empowers me to conquer the enemy. You hear what I'm saying? So he said, without sin, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may attain mercy and find grace to help resist the devil in the time of need. Amen? You've got to understand that mercy and grace empowers us to resist the temptation. Hear me, brother and sister. Mercy and grace empowers us. Amen. It empowers us to resist temptation. So if you don't have the power to resist the temptation, then you have to question where you're at. Amen. Very important. Amen. So it, we resist the temptation of the flesh, which here, you know what? It comes from Satan. The temptation comes from Satan. Mercy and grace has been perverted today by carnal doctrines is what's happened. Amen. Which tell us that we can't, we can, uh, I don't want to say, we can practice the desires of the flesh, which is lawlessness, without judgment coming. That's not true. The law judges all, all sin. Amen. Lawlessness is still lawlessness. All over scripture, you can see in scripture, and I'll show it to you tonight, and I'll continue to show it, uh, that God doesn't want you to walk in lawlessness. Amen? How can a God that empowers me and tells me he can save me from the dead if he can't deliver me from the sin that's going to take me to the grave? Just think about what I'm saying. Hello, Jeremy. God bless you, brother. You should begin your book if you ain't already got it. Amen? 
Glory to God. All right. It's true if you're if you're following a form of godliness, amen. You don't want to follow a form of godliness. Uh, and then you hear people say they say, well, no one can keep the law. And they're talking about the Ten Commandments. And then I had someone say today, Why well, it's all on two commandments. Love the Lord thy God with all the heart and love thy neighbors thyself. Okay. So you you want to go that way. You're right. I'm not disagreeing with you. But let's understand what he was saying. If you love your neighbor, you wouldn't commit adultery with his wife. Right? If you love your neighbor, you wouldn't steal his lawnmower. If you love your neighbor, you wouldn't lie to him. If you love your neighbor, you wouldn't do a lot of things. So he's saying he's not eliminated anything. He's finding out whether you love your neighbor or you love yourself. I'm just being real. Amen? I mean, that's true about the law part if you're, if you're uh, wanting to live in a form of godliness. But if you follow Jesus... You receive mercy and grace to become doers of the law. Amen? How can you have the mind of Christ if you're continuously walking with the mind of the devil? How could we have the mind of Christ if we continuously walk with the mind of the devil? God is commanding us to be conformed into the image of Jesus. How can we com be conformed into the image of Jesus if we continue to continue to walk in the image of the enemy. It doesn't make sense. I deal with people every day, all day long on the telephone. We get calls from everywhere in the world. And I, I deal with people that are struggling mentally, physically, and spiritually. And they want freedom. And God wants you to be free more than you want to be free. And more than I want to be free. But we have to understand the process of God's freedom. Bless you, April. God bless you, uh, Felicia. Uh, different ones on here. God bless you. I have a lot of other platforms are on here too. So we want to just thank everybody for joining us. God bless you all. Amen. We have to understand something. The sons of God are those who are justified by faith. And this faith leads us to fulfill the law. And don't shout me down and go, he's one of those preachers talking about fulfilling law. Listen to what I'm saying to you, and I'll prove everything in Scripture. Okay? We do it by the Spirit. The Pharisees had to do it by the letter. The sons of God, the Gentiles, do it by the Spirit. Because it can't be done without the Spirit. See, guys, the Bible says the law was not written for a righteous person. It was written for a lawless person, an adulterer, a fornicator. You can go on and on and on. So it's not written for a righteous person. A righteous person's already fulfilling it, so why would they need to read it? You know what I'm saying? A righteous person's already fulfilled it, so why do they need to read it? It's kind of like going down the expressway 65 mile an hour, and everybody else is doing 80, but the speed limit's 65. The cop comes up, you got nothing to worry about because you're already doing the, the speed limit. It's everybody else that needs to be concerned. Well, if I'm not Cheating on my wife, why would I have to be worried about cheating? If I'm not lying, would I, why would I have to be worried about lying? If I'm not stealing, why would I have to be worried about stealing? I wouldn't because it would mean the law has nothing to do with me because I have immunity over the law because I've already been converted by the Spirit which fulfilled the law. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Amen? Glory be to God. So the sons of God are those who are justified by faith. And if you want to understand how you're justified by faith, it says we're justified by faith in Christ Jesus. Okay? And that's in your Bible. Okay? Well, here, I'm going to throw the verse in here. Go to Galatians chapter 2. Go to Galatians chapter 2. I'm going to throw this verse in here. It's not in my notes. But I want to throw it in here anyway. Okay? Galatians chapter 2. And I want to show you something. And we'll start at verse 16. Everybody loves verse 16. Okay? But I'm not going to just quit in 16. Amen. I'm going to go to a couple more verses after that. But I want to show you something about Galatians chapter 2, verse 16. Amen. Let me get there. Okay, watch this. Know that a man is not justified by the works of the law, because by faith, but, what? But by faith in what? Jesus Christ. Even we having believed in Jesus Christ or Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith. Now watch this, justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Now please don't read ahead. I want you to stick with me. I want you to hear what I got to say to you because it's very important. I'm going to tell you what, 
devil been lying a whole lot of people a whole lot of people going through a lot of things they don't need to go through that they can get free from tonight right here on this right here on this television okay you can get free and i don't got to come cast devils out of nobody the spirit of god and the word of god will deliver you sitting right here on the phone i mean right here on the internet amen so listen to what he go what, what i want you to see so it says we're justified by faith in christ right did christ fulfill the law absolutely he did okay so let's see what jesus says okay this is what christ said he said shall not be justified by the works of the law we know that right for the law for no flesh shall be justified now watch this verse 17. he, he uses the word but now but means everything i just read is irrelevant okay now listen to what he says but if while i seek to be justified hold on a minute i thought i was already justified it says I'm justified in Christ, but, but look what it says here. But if all I seek to be justified by Christ, so wait a minute. So Christ is looking for something to take place in me before Christ himself will justify me. Don't shout me down for teaching. So Christ says, it says, but if while I seek to be justified by Christ, Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is Christ therefore the minister of sin? Look what it says. No. He's not. For if I build again those things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. If you study that, that means a lawbreaker, basically. You're, you're, you're a practicer of sin. Amen? For I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. Now, you, here's what I want. Please listen to me. Please listen to me. I'm like, Paul, I plead with you by the mercy of God. Listen to what I got to say. Don't ridicule me and criticize me. Let the word of God free you tonight. Some of you are being tormented. You don't have to be tormented. I don't care what you learn. I don't care where you learned it. Let, let the Bible do the talking. And let the devil do the walking. Amen. There's your little uh, poetry. Amen. So look here. He says that while I seek to be justified. Okay. I can only be justified to, through Christ. Amen. You can only be justified through Christ. Okay. If I put on the mind of Christ and I take on the image of God. Show me anywhere in there that God broke the law or committed adultery or he fornicated or did anything. Here's what I, I see people do. They use the word of God as a license to sin, thinking God's going to ordain it and he's not. He's going to judge it. Amen. Jesus doesn't tell me to be free from something and then not empower me to be freed from it. That's what grace is and mercy is. See, I, mercy is new every day for me because I need it every day. But grace is there to empower me from the sin that tries to entangle me so I can walk in the freedom that's been given to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So mercy and grace, like I said, will make you become a doer of the law. What do you mean by a doer of the law? Okay. How many knows on here that you cannot go out and steal or you could go to jail, right? So if you decide to be a good person and not steal, are you breaking the law? No, you're not. You became a doer of it. See, here's the most important thing to understand. The reason Christ had to come with the precious Holy Spirit is because even if I tried to keep every jot and tittle of the law, I was only doing it because I had to do it, but in my heart, I didn't want to do it. So basically, I wasn't fulfilling it because I didn't agree with it. But when the Spirit of God who was in Christ Jesus comes in me, then I began to take on the nature of God who wrote the law, was able to keep the law, and then empowers me by the Spirit through the love of God to not want to break the law because my love has changed in my life because the love of God has been shed abroad in my heart, which doesn't want to hurt my brothers or sisters. It doesn't want to. Do you hear what I'm saying? So we have to realize that. God wants nothing but the best for us. Amen. We have to know that. I just noticed that my thing ain't up here. I don't get what's going on there. Amen. Praise God. We'll have to put it back up there, but that's okay. So I want you to understand that, guys, that God wants nothing but the best for us. But we have to be willing by the Spirit of God to allow the Spirit of God to direct us in the ways of God. What the world does is the world comes in and goes, oh, God wouldn't do that. God wouldn't do that. He just wouldn't do that. I just know God wouldn't do that. God can do whatever God wants, but God wants you to be free. 
Bear with me, I'm having the thing mess up here. I gotta go fix it real quick. Take me a second, I do apologize. I don't know why it's done what it's done, but let me see if I can fix this. Uh, hallelujah, glory be to God forevermore. So just know that God doesn't want you to be defeated. God wants you to be victorious in everything you say and do. So now let's go back to what we're teaching. I can't get it fixed over there, it's okay. This is more important than that over there. You you can you can uh, live without it saying the title, amen? I want you to hear what I'm saying because what I'm saying is important. How can you have, listen to me, how can you have the mind of Christ if you continuously are walking with the mind of an enemy, which is Satan? Remember, the sons of God are those who are justified by faith in Christ. Amen? Oh. Oh, sneezed. Excuse me. Glory to God. So they're, they're justified by faith in Christ, which will lead them by the Spirit to fulfill the law because the Spirit of God fulfills the law. That's why Paul said, he said, one will fulfill it through faith, the other will fulfill it by faith. But do we then make the law void? He says, on the contrary. No, we establish the law. What? We establish the nature of God. Amen. The nature of God is just a representation of his character. Do you understand that? And you and I can't fulfill it without him. It cannot be done without Jesus Christ. That is the most powerful thing about God. It cannot be done without Jesus Christ. We need God with all of our heart to fulfill the plans of God in our life. And without it, we can't fulfill it, man. It just cannot be done. We have to listen to the Spirit of God to fulfill the things of God so we can be the sons of God and walk in the glory of God. Amen? So we have to understand that, okay? So th this must happen so our, so our heart can be purified. See, we all have to go through the sanctifying, sanctification process so our hearts can be purified and you and I can love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen? That means you got to lay down your life. And I have to lay down my life. If we don't lay down our life, then we can't, we can't do what God showed us to do because we don't have the power to do it. We need to have the power of God to do what he's asked us to do. How can we have the power of God to do what God's asked us to do if we don't lay down our life so we can? You see what I'm saying? We have to be willing. We have to be willing to do it. We have to be willing to lay down our lives. And there's just a lot of people that are not willing to lay down their lives. Are you hearing me now? Glory be to God. You have to understand we have to be willing to lay down our lives. So you and I, we have to lay down our lives. And this is the only way we can walk in the love that God demands. Whereby are we giving unto us, he's giving unto us what? Exceedingly gracious, precious promises. Look at, look at, go to, go to 2 Peter 1, 4. Go to 2 Peter 1, 4 in your Bible, please. 2 Peter 1, 4. I want you to see this. The devil don't want you to know this, because let me tell you something. Once you know it and you start walking in, then you really become a threat to a threat to the enemy. You understand what I'm saying? Most people aren't a threat to the devil. They're, they're in so much communion with him. Why would they why would he be concerned about? Him? Look what it says here. Okay, so you're over there, okay? It says, whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises. Now watch this. That by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through lust. Now, now listen to what you read, brothers and sisters. Listen. I'm going to go back. I'm going to read slow. I, I might be in here for a little bit. I want you to get what I'm saying. Because the devil been stealing from a bunch of you. Amen. Whereby are given unto us exceedingly great and precious promises that by these ye might. That doesn't mean you will. It says you might be partakers of his divine nature. We take these promises to heart and then we walk them out in order to have the nature of Christ Jesus. Amen. And then we can love others as Christ loved us. If we don't take on the nature of God, how can we love people like God? We can't. You know, I was on the phone earlier with a son in the spirit, and he made a statement about something, and I said, here, I want you to go read this. He come back, he goes, okay, you just slammed me. No, I didn't slam him. 
he wasn't mean in a bad way. What I was doing is I was trying to get him to get a revelation of what Jesus said. We forget what Jesus says. If you want to be like Christ, you've got to do it the way Christ did it. That's why he said he's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through Christ. Amen. So you got to understand that. So look at 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 22. Okay? 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22. Are you with me, brother and sister? Watch what he says here. Seeing you are purified, seeing you have purified your souls. Stop. What do you mean we purified our souls? Watch what he says. Seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. What? Through the what? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. Amen. Unto love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart, fervently, fervently, being born again by the Word of God. What did it say? We're being born again by what? The Word of God. The incorruptible seed is the Word of God. You've got to be born again by the Word of God. And what you've got to keep doing is you've got to keep sowing the seed, sowing the seed, sowing the seed, so that you can produce the fruit you're looking for. And the fruit is God's nature. Are you hearing me? The fruit is the Father's nature. And if you, want to, if you want to see the fruit of God's nature, you're going to have to sow the seed. Are you with me? Amen. All right. So look at 23. The, the, you know, I, I read both verses. I believe I had them both in there, okay? So the word will conform us into the image of Christ, which is what? Holy and blameless. Okay? We then have the divine nature of God, and then we will bear the fruit of love. Without doing it Christ's way, we cannot bear the fruit of love because we must crucify the old man in order to walk in the new man. Listen to me, guys. Without a crucifixion, there's no death. Without a crucifixion, there's no death. If you've been buried with Christ, then you'll be risen with Christ. But if you're not buried with him, you're not being risen. If you're not taking on his nature and dying to the old nature and putting on the new nature and doing the things to walk in the spirit of God and in the power of God and the glory of God and the word of God, then you better check out your God. Are you hearing me, somebody? Amen. All right, looky here. So the word will conform us into the image of Christ, who's holy and blameless. We then take on the divine nature of God and will bear the fruit of love. The opposite of this is to love the flesh, and have our mindset set on the things of the world. Amen. Building building our treasures on earth and not in heaven. Amen. For the Bible says, look at Matthew 6. Look at Matthew chapter 6. Uh, let's look at Matthew chapter 6 verse 2. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verse 2. Amen. Matthew chapter 6 verse 2. I might want to do first one first. I got them both rolled down. Okay, watch what it says. I'll just use verse one first. Take heed that you do not do your terrible deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Now look at verse two. Amen. I was going to read them opposite. Therefore, when you are what? Doing it, do it when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. But surely I say to you, they have their reward. So, in other words, whatever they did before men, that's all they get, and that's their reward. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Got to understand that. All right, go in your Bible. I want you to go to Ephesians. Chapter five, uh, 5, and I'm going to look at verse uh, Ephesians 5 through 8. Amen. Go to Ephesians 5. And we'll look at Ephesians 5 through 8. Amen. I've got a lot wrote down here. I've got it all wrote down, and I'm trying to make sure I don't mess it up. For this you know. So, guys, you write this down. This isn't my opinion. This is New Testament. 
For this you know, that no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor coveted man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of Christ and of God. Now watch this. Let no one deceive you with vain words. For because of these things, the wrath of God comes. This is New Testament. I'm not under the wrath of God. Well, if we're not walking in obedience to God, we might be surprised what we're under. You better learn to read this whole Bible from the front of the, to the back and make sure that nobody lied to you. Amen. He just told you, let no one, no, don't let nobody deceive you. Amen. Amen. Don't let nobody deceive us. You don't want nobody to deceive you. Amen. Look at verse uh, 6. Let no one what deceive you with empty words because of these things. The wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Look at verse 7. Therefore do not be takers, partakers what? With them. If there wasn't no consequence to what they're doing, and I'm in the New Testament, why would he say do not be partakers with them? Because there is consequences. Hear me, brothers and sisters. Every choice you and I make has a consequence, good or bad. People say, then I don't want to make any choices. It's still making a choice. Either way, you're making a choice. Amen? So when, when it says, when it says, let no one deceive you with vain words, for because these things the wrath of God comes upon uh, the sons of disobedience. Well, what's the wrath of God that's coming on? The judgment of the law. That's what comes on them. And the ones that are disobedient are those who walk after the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the most proud of life, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the most proud of life. That's the same thing Jesus had to battle. Don't you think that, that we go through the same thing? We got to come out of the wilderness. We got to come out of the world. We got to come out of the flesh to walk and live in the spirit. If you walk in the flesh and you walk in the spirit, they're at war with one another. You can't hold the hand of the devil and walk with the hand of God. It doesn't work that way. Please hear me, brothers and sisters. God doesn't want you to be defeated. He wants you to be victorious. But the only way you're going to be victorious is to do it God's way. You know, I get people call me all the time, well, I'm living with a girl. Well, you know what? If you're living with a girl and you ain't married to her, God's wrath's on you. If you're a man living with a man or a woman living with a woman, well, you say what you want. You can preach what you want, but it ain't going to change the fact that you're in trouble. God's wrath's on you. The only way to get out from under the wrath is getting God. And when you get in God, that'll get you out from under the wrath. But if you get out of God, guess what's waiting there? Oh, it is. Believe me, it is. It's all over this Bible. People need to start preaching it. Amen? So, be ye not partakers, it said, with them. For ye were sometimes, you were what? Sometimes, formerly, darkness. But now you are light in the Lord. Okay? Make sure I didn't go too far. I did. Let me give you the other verses where I'm at here. Uh, write down verse 14 and 15. And then I'm going to show you verse 17. Same place, Ephesians. Chapter 5, 14, 15, 17. 27, and now back it up to 26, okay? I do it the way, that's just the way I do it. So you with me? All right. It says, Be ye not partakers with them, for ye were sometimes formerly darkness, but now our light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Amen. Therefore he says, watch. Awaken, sleeper. And arise. Arise. From what? What are you going to arise from? The judgment. Of the deeds of your flesh and my flesh. It says, see that you walk what? Circumstantially. Understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is what I was telling a brother earlier. You got to know God's will. Not your will, God's will. We're supposed to take on the will. Remember Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. We want to walk with God. We got to walk the way God says. Amen. Understand what the will of the Lord is. That he might present it to himself what kind of a church a glorious church not having spot nor wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy without blemish that he might what now watch this is important he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the watering of the word what am i talking about tonight 
the Word of God. God wants you to see the Word so you can be transformed by the Word so you can walk in the image of the Word, which is the nature and the character of God Himself. Glory be to God forevermore. Hallelujah. I want you, I want you to see these scriptures clearly explain that sanctification, guys, that sanctification is being cleansed or cleaned by the Word of God in order to escape the judgment of the wrath of God. The Word of God must clean us by the, we must be cleaned by the Word of God to keep us from having to face the wrath of God. Amen? Look at, look at Galatians 3.24. Look at Galatians 3.24. Amen. Amen. Glory to be to God forevermore. Look at Galatians 3.24, what it says. The law is our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Amen. In Christ. Faith in Christ. Amen. We got to remember with that we got to be led to Christ. Amen by faith, and then we're justified by faith. Amen? Remember, we have to be led to Christ by faith, and then we are justified by faith. We have already seen that that not the hearers of the law are just before God. Amen? We already see that. But the doers of the law are justified. Okay, look. Go, look, go there. Go Romans 2.13. Go to Romans 2.13. Glory be to God forevermore. You know, Romans 2.13, look what it says here. For not the hearers of the law are just in the sight of God, but the doers of the law are what? So if we don't become doers by the Spirit of God, then that means we're breaking the law of God, which will bring forth the wrath of God. Plain and simple. I'm reading your Bible. God didn't say the doers of law get justified by fulfilling the law if he didn't mean it had to be fulfilled. See, here's what happens, brothers and sisters. We, we act like God did something different from the Old to the New Testament. The Old Testament was concealed and the New Testament was the Old revealed. But God didn't get up one day. It, it, that's almost like saying, well, God, apparently you didn't know what you were talking about. Apparently, you didn't know what you was talking about because you messed up the Old Testament, so you had to fix it all up with the New Testament. God ain't never messed up anything. The only ones that's ever messed up what God said was the people reading it because they wasn't being led by the Spirit of God so they could translate what the Word of God said and then we could be healed by God. Amen? See, you have to understand, God had a plan, and that plan won't fail. But we have to yield to the plan. Amen? Please understand that we have to yield to the plan of God in order to reap the benefits of God. Being justified by faith means that we are made just as if we had never sinned. That's how we become a slave of righteousness. Because being justified by faith means that we have been made just as if we had never sinned. And when we give him all of our whole heart, and this is where the line gets drawn, if we... People don't give God their whole heart because everybody wants to control things. We got to control it. You can't control God. God's uncontrollable. Amen? You have to be led by God. He's not a genie in a bottle that you rub and get what you want. Amen? You have to be led by God. Amen? So when we give him our whole heart, we're justified. Then he leads us to to become a doer of the law. But we got to give him our whole heart. You can't give him the pieces of it. Amen. So when we when we when we're led by him, we'll become a doer of the law, which means we'll walk in love. Amen. And then it's natural for us to want to keep the law. I don't get up in the morning thinking about sin. I get up in the morning praising my God and asking him, what are we doing today, Dad? Most of the time, to be honest with you, when Janet and I get up, God done got our day planned out because phone starts ringing. We sit down, we spend our little time together, we you know talk about the Lord, do what we're going to do, have our cup of coffee, 
And next thing you know, man, we're moving in God. That's a good thing. So when it becomes doer of law, that means is we're walking in love. It's natural for us to keep the law when our hearts are pure because our, our nature is new. You get a new nature, all things pass away, all things become new. But those who follow after the carnal doctrines, they'll oppose the truth because they are lovers of self and they trust in their own form of godliness instead of trusting in the truth of God. When we come to the Lord, we're to love Him with all of our heart. That means we got to love Him more than the world, more than the things in the world, more than our family, more than our desires of our flesh. we got to love Him more than anything. Then the Word of God is able to wash our hearts from all unrighteousness. Amen? Because our motive and our desires of our hearts are more to please Jesus than to please the world. Amen? We want to please Him more than fulfill the, the desires of pride and greed and selfishness and building treasures in the world or anything else. We, we no longer present our members, which is our body, as slaves of sin, but as slaves of righteousness. Paul gave us an example of, of this walk. Amen? Look at, look at Philippians. Go to Philippians. Amen? Go to Philippians chapter 3. We'll look at 7 through 10. Glory be to God. I hope you're getting something out of this tonight. Amen? Because I want you to be victorious. I really do. Amen? I want you to be victorious. Amen? And I want you to know, Philippians is one of my favorite verses. I remember the first time I quoted this verse a man, to a man, he goes, he said, Brother Ted, you crazy. I said, what do you mean I'm crazy? He goes, dude, do you know what you're praying? I go, well, I know exactly what I prayed. He goes, dude, do you realize what you're bringing? I said, I don't know about what I'm bringing. If I'm praying what I'm praying, I'm going to bring what I prayed. And I'm asking to be like Christ Jesus. Amen? So you have to understand that. God wants you to know the power of his resurrection. Okay, look at verse 7. Philippians 3, 7 to 10. But what things we get, what gains were get, what things were gained to me, these have counted, these I've counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Okay, let me stop praying for just a minute. You notice something interesting about Paul. He said he suffered the loss of all those things that he had. I think we forget who he was originally, just like we forget who Moses was originally. Moses was a prince ready to take over a kingdom and he walked away from it for God. Some people, you can't even get to walk away from a donut, much less the rest of their life. Just saying, don't get mad at me for telling you the truth, amen? So watch what he says. For the knowledge of Christ Jesus, whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them all as rubbish, that I may obtain Christ and be found in him Amen. Not having my own righteousness. So look, if Paul said, I want to have Christ's righteousness, not my own righteousness, that meant he could have a form of godliness or he can really walk in godliness. Which one do you want? A form of godliness or do you really want to walk in godliness? Amen. Which is from the law. Amen. But that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed into his death. Paul was trying to tell us, as I crucified my flesh and I yielded my spirit, man, to the spirit of the living God, I began to take on the nature of God and I began to take on the image of God and then I began to walk in the power of God, which freed me from the enemy of God. Are you hearing me? He said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformed into his image, if by any means I may obtain to the resurrection, that I may obtain, may obtain, may obtain. That meant he knew there was a process he had to go through to get what he was after, which was to be resurrected in Christ Jesus. Glory be to God. Paul took up his cross and denied himself in order to obtain to the resurrection from the dead. 
how Paul explains it in this passage. How does he explain it? It's simple. He was being perfected in love. This is a love walk. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. One smack you on one cheek, turn you the other cheek. If you do these things, children of God, you will be called the sons of God. You must crucify the old nature of man to walk in the nature of God so that you can flow in the power of God to be created in the image of God by the Spirit of God and, by, and take on His nature is a process that everyone must go through, but not everyone will go through. Look at 1 Peter 2.21, please. And let me tell you something. He didn't just give Paul the instruction. He gave you and I the instruction. Bless you, Sister Hannah. God bless you very much. Amen. God didn't give just Paul the instruction. God has given us the very same instructions. There's not but one gospel, one spirit, one Jesus, but people have made a lot of gospels, a lot of Jesuses, and used a lot of spirits and say it's God and it ain't. It's not. There's only one gospel. There's only one way. And if you really want to know that way, you got to give all God all your heart because if not, you can look at the Bible and it's just like a closed book. But when you get real with God, God gets real with you. Amen? Look what he says here in uh, 1 Peter 2, 21. For even here unto where ye were called, because Christ also, also suffered for us, Leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Please look at what you read. Leaving us example. Leaving us an example. Mark it in your Bible, praise God. Leaving us example that we should follow in his steps. So Christ said, walk the way I walk. If you want the result that I was getting, you have to walk that walk the same way to get the result. And the Spirit of God and the mercy of God and the grace of God will empower you to take on the nature of God. Glory be to God. Now watch what he says. 1 Peter chapter 4. I'm going to read 1 and 2. Are you with me? Glory to God. I hope you're getting something out of this. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 1 and 2 says this. Please mark stuff in your Bible. So when you come back, the Holy Spirit will show you. Amen. I want you to see the truth of the gospel. Because when you can walk in the truth of the gospel, then you can walk in the peace of the gospel and the power of the gospel. And you'll take dominion over this place because God says that dominion is yours as his children, but only his children get dominion. Amen? For as much then as Christ, verse 1, chapter 4, 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 1. Look what it says. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh. Please circle this next part in your Bible. Arm yourself. Arm yourself. Likewise with the same mind. What mind? That Christ suffered in the flesh. You got to arm yourself. What's he telling you? You're getting ready to what? You're getting ready to suffer in the flesh. <laughs> for he that, now watch this. I'm going to show you how to get free. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin. Would you mark that in your Bible, please? 1 John chapter uh, 5, verse 18 says, He that keepeth himself, the wicked one touches him not. A lot of being, people being touched by the devil. My Bible says if you keep yourself, the devil can't touch you. I'm just saying. Well, how do I keep myself, Brother Teddy? I'm showing you. I'm going to show you how to be born again, not only by the Spirit of God, but by the Word of God, so you'll take on the nature of God. You want to walk in real power, you can walk in it. I'll show you how to do it. Amen? Glory be to God. Let me read again. I'll start in verse 1 again. For, for as much then as Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself likewise with the same mind. Now watch this. For he that has suffered in the flesh, please circle this, has ceased from sin. It says he ceased from sin. That he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men. But for what? The will of God. Glory be to God forevermore. God, the, the will of God is your sanctification. It's my sanctification. It's God's will that I get purified and sanctified. That's not my opinion. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'll show you how to get free from sickness and disease. I'll show you how to walk in divine health. I can show you how to be delivered and be healed. Is there a process? Absolutely. Can God instantaneously heal you? Absolutely God can instantly heal you. But are you ready to be healed? 
He sent his word to heal you. Are you really ready to be healed? Amen. Glory to God. But for the will of God. Amen. Okay, look at up. Uh, let me see here. I got to pull this out. Okay, so the will of God for us is sanctification and what? A pure heart. Amen. Sanctification and what? A pure heart. And then if we're children, we're heirs, right? If we're children, we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. So to be, so, so I should say, with Christ Jesus. If so, be that we suffer with him. We suffer with him, we're joint heirs. That we also what? Maybe what? Glorified with him. Always bearing in the body the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what your Bible says? Look, well, look, go, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I mean, chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. Amen. Glory be to God. 1 Corinthians. I mean, 2 Corinthians, I'm sorry. Chapter 4, verse 10 and 11. You there? All right. Now look what it says. Always bearing about in the body the death of the Lord Jesus. Amen. That the life also of Christ might be manifested in our what? Our body. Look at what you read. Always bearing about in the body. Our body. The death. The death of who? <laughs> Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ that the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our body. What? Who's supposed to get, get re resurrected in me? Who's supposed to be resurrected in you? One man is supposed to be dying and another man is supposed to be resurrected. Some people try to get the good man and keep him dead and keep the old man living. That don't work too good, amen? That's what I'm saying. For we which live are also delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Christ might be manifested in our mortal body. Listen to what you, we are delivered unto death, dying to the old man, dying to the old man, dying to the old man, risen to the new man, risen to the new man. Dying to the old man, risen to the new man. Glory be to God forevermore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, listen, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. God did not, God does not have but one gospel. There's a lot of other gospels, but there's only one gospel. Amen? Do you think the, do you think the church in the first church in the book of Acts proved that they loved, <laughs> they loved God and they were walking in the likeness of Christ by the love shown that they laid down their life for one another? I wonder if the church today does it. I don't think the church today walks like it should walk. Look at look at your Bible in Acts chapter 2. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 44 through 46. Acts chapter 2 verse 42, uh, 44 through uh, 46. Acts chapter 2 verse 44 through 46. Amen. Now all who believe were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and their goods and divided them among all as anyone who had need. So continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house that they ate their food with gladness and simplicity, and simplicity of what? Heart. Amen. I could ask the question again. Did they love their neighbor? As themselves? 
Did they love one another as Christ loved them? The first church set the example for us by having given, been given the nature of Christ. And then Paul set the same example. What's happened to the gospel is there is another gospel. And people are getting another Jesus and they're getting another spirit and they're being tormented and they're being beat up because there's no more fear of God. There's no believing what God says. It's just, uh, it's, well, you know, just, if I just love the Lord to God and I love my neighbors myself, well, first you've got to understand what loving God and loving your neighbor is, not what you want to make up in your mind. Amen. We need to do it the way God said it so we can get what God promised. Amen. I mean, God does have ways he does stuff. Amen. The law of God's been taken away. It's been lost there, and there's no fear of God. The, the, the church in the book of Acts knew they were to forsake all and be perfected in love. The church today, they think they can have all, don't got to forsake nothing, and they can be perfected in whatever they want to be perfected in. But that doesn't make you perfected in love. Listen to me, guys. I mean this with all my heart. The one thing I've learned about God, bless you, Matthew. The one thing I, I've learned a lot of things about God, but one of the things I learned about God is this. If God don't change me, I can't be changed. If God don't heal me, I can't be healed. If God don't deliver me, I can't be delivered. So so anybody thinks they can be healed, set free, or delivered without God is totally out of their, They just lost it. Listen to Scripture. you got to know Scripture. Correcting those in a spirit of meekness and gentleness. Now watch this word. If perhaps God will grant them repentance. Correcting those who are in opposition. What are they in opposition to? The word of God, which I'm preaching right now. It says, correcting those in the spirit of meekness and gentleness. If per, or, meekness and, who are in opposition to the word of God. If perhaps God will grant them. So that doesn't mean God has to grant us repentance. God doesn't have to do anything that he don't want to do. That's why he's God. So if perhaps God will grant us repentance. Watch this. That we may escape the snare of the devil by whom we've been taken captive to do his will. See, people are doing the will of the devil and they don't even know it. If you feed the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boast of life, I promise you, you're doing the will of the devil, not the will of God. And what's sad is people believe it. They believe they can keep doing what they're doing and it's okay because they're under grace. It shows me they don't understand grace. It shows me they don't understand mercy. It shows me they, they've got a perverted grace and a perverted mercy because God never sent the law for the righteous. He sent it for the unrighteous. So if it's for unrighteous people and I'm still living in an unrighteous way and I need to become righteous and I can only become righteous through Christ Jesus because while seeking to be justified, if I am still found a sinner, is Christ the justifier of my sin? The Bible says, may it never be. God wants you to be healed. God wants you to be delivered. God wants you to walk free. But God has a plan and you've got to do it God's way in order to get the benefits God has for you. And so do I. See, this is the beautiful thing about the gospel. It's no respecter. Of anybody. Doesn't matter how many gifts you got. It doesn't matter how smart you are. Doesn't matter how much money you got. Doesn't matter if you're white, if you're black, if you're fat, you're skinny, you're tall, you're short. It really doesn't matter what country you're in. It's no respecter. The gospel is no respecter of any person. And guess what? Neither is the devil. Neither is the devil. Look at, look at Matthew. Let me talk to I mean Mark. Look at Mark chapter 10. And I want to read 17 to 21. We're going to talk. I'm going to show you something about a rich young river here. Watch what the scripture says. Amen. I hope you're getting something. Because I'll be honest with you guys. I want you to be a success in God. And I want you to be victorious in God. Amen. I want you to be a total success in God. Glory be to God. Did I mark too many in here? Mark 10, I wrote 17 to 21. All right, should work. So the rich young man comes to Jesus and he asks him a question. He says, Master, what shall I do that I might inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, now he was referring to the law when he said this, said unto him, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness. Amen. Defraud not no one. 
honor thy father and thy mother. And he answered and said unto him, watch this, Master, all these have I observed with my from my youth. So he said, I did this, Lord. Why, why are you asking me? Why are you telling me this? He said, I did this. Amen. He said, I did all that. Master, all these I've observed from my youth. Watch what Jesus said. Jesus said unto him, one thing you lack. Go your way, sell whatever thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasures in heaven, and come take up your cross and follow me. Amen. Now, we got to come to Jesus Christ with all of our heart, just like God was dealing with him. See, Jesus wanted all of his heart. There were some that had his heart that he didn't want to let go of. Amen. So if he does not have all of our heart, then we'll turn to the treasures of the world. Do you understand that? We'll go to the treasures of the world. If God has all of our heart, we will then build our treasures in heaven instead of on the earth. We remain on this earth only a short time, guys, to pass through the trials of this world and prove to God that we love him with all of our heart. Amen. And that our, prior, our priority, our main desire is to spend eternity with him. Because what if a man gaineth the whole world and loses his very soul? What's he gained? He's gained nothing. Nothing. So look, look at 19, chapter, uh, Matthew 19, 21, right? So we know Jesus said to him, rich to the rich and word, if thou will be perfect, you really want to be perfect though, go sell what thou have, amen? Jesus said those things to him because he saw that there was greed still in the heart of the rich young ruler. Do you understand that? There was still greed there. And Jesus was trying to deal with the greed that was in his heart. Amen. God didn't want that greed in his heart. It says the guy was sad, you know, he, he was sad saying, and he went away greed. What? For he had what? Great possessions? He had money? He was grieved because he realized that he loved his possessions more than he loved God. You hear me? He realized he loved his possessions more than he loved God. He was boasting in the things that he did that didn't really affect him. But when Jesus touched the goat calf in his heart, all of a sudden, he, he stood back and goes, whoa, wait a minute now. You're touching my gold calf. You can have that. I don't mind you touching that. You can touch this. You can touch that. Don't, don't touch my gold calf. Because he had what? Great position. He was grieved because he, he realized that he had what? Loved his possessions more than God. Because the lover of money is the root of all evil. Amen. And Jesus looked around about and said unto, him, uh, to his disciples, How hard it shall be that that rich, that how, how to, I'm sorry, I messed up. And Jesus looked around about and said unto his disciples, Now how hard shall it be that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Matthew 10, 23 and, uh, 22 and 23. You know, many people read that verse and are astonished at the words and wonder, well, who can be saved? <laughs> the disciples were amazed and astonished too, amen? And they were astonished out of what? Measures saying among themselves, who can be saved? In other words, who can be healed? Who can be delivered? Who can persevere? Amen. And Jesus looked about and said unto with men, it is impossible. What? To Peter. And again, what did he say? He said to Peter, it's impossible with men, but what? All things are possible with God, right? What did he tell Peter to do? Follow him. Amen. Who are you following? You following Jesus or are you following the world? Just curious. Remember Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, There is no man that hath left his house, his brothers, his sister, his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his land for my sake and the gospel. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time with persecution and and in the world. Amen. Mark chapter 10, guys. Verse 24.
26 through 30 and 32. You know, we're at a place in time where people are more concerned with themselves and what they have instead of what God has for them. When we love the Lord with all of our heart, I'm going to tell you something. It's going to cost you everything in this life and in this world. Everything. It's going to cost me everything in this world. The Spirit of God can... If we give it, if we give it, we give him everything we have. Then the Spirit of God can totally control our lives, and then Satan can do nothing because all selfishness is removed from us. Amen. We got to start putting into practice the commandments of the Lord to love our neighbor as ourselves. Amen, and to love one another as Christ loved us. There, there's a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction. It's not going to change. And you're not going to change the gospel just because you want to. If you look at all the scriptures through the eyes of a, of a form of godliness, you'll, you'll, call, a, <laughs> you'll call this a, a, I don't want to say this. Uh, help me, Lord, how should I say this? If we, look at, if we look at these scriptures that I've read through the eyes of a form of godliness, we will call this a history of, of a church rather than a revelation of the church of Jesus Christ, which was to be perfected in love. We're to be perfected in love. And that perfection can only take place through Christ. Not only was the rich young ruler required to sell all that he had, he had to follow Jesus. But many in the first church in the book of Acts felt led to do the same. Amen. The powers of darkness could no longer, when they came to Christ, the powers of darkness could no longer tempt them with anything in the world. Because they built all their treasures in heaven and not on the things of the earth. Amen. They laid down their lives to please God and, became, and, they, and they became vessels of honor, of gold and silver for God. And they loved God instead of loving the world. Because now they were taking on the nature of God. Instead of keeping the nature of the world. Look at, look at Titus, guys. Chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Look at Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Look what, look what he says here. For we ourselves also were... Sometimes foolish. Now this, listen to what he's reading. Listen to what you read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving what? Diverse lust and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hating and hateful and hating one another. But watch this now. But after that, the kindness and the love of God are savored what did he do? Towards man did what did he do? He appeared, right? Jesus did. He saved us. How did he save us? By the worship of the word, by the regeneration. Amen. Being cleansed by the word and the spirit. And renewing of the Holy Spirit. He renewed us by the precious Holy Spirit. So we can have what? The mind of Christ. That's sanctification. That's the sanctification process we have to go through. People are not getting what they ask for from God because they're not walking with God. Look, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us, now watch this, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from what? All what? Iniquity. Look. From iniquity and purify for himself what? A, a, a precious people? A, a, a perfect people? A zealous people for what? Zealous for what? Good work who walk in love? Look, I want you to look where he says this. Where he says he will what? And he might, that he might redeem us from what? All what? Iniquity? 
redeem us from what? All what? Iniquity? Titus chapter 2. And I'll read it, but go on. Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. Go there. I read 3, 3, 5, 3, 3 through 5. But look at Titus chapter 2, 11 through 14. Okay, get off there, but hit this. All right. I want to read it again. I'm going to start in verse 11, chapter 2, verse 11 through 14. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and lust in worldly lust. We should live soberly, righteously. Is he talking to Christians? Amen. And godly in this present age. Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. Whom gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous from good works. Praise God. Redeem us from every lawless deed. What's he going to redeem us from? All iniquity? Remember Jesus said, many in that day will say, Lord, Lord, did we not do these things? They'll say, depart from me, worker of iniquity, practicer of sin. You never came to me to be purified and sanctified by me. You never came to me and learned the word from me. You never came to me to be led by my spirit. You never came to me. You went to the world. You went everywhere, but you never came to me. You have to come to him to be changed by him. For without the changing of God, there is no remission of sin. Without repentance, there's no remission of sin. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Without evidence that you've been born again, filled with the Spirit and changed by God, there is no being born again. You will know them by their fruit. Amen? Jesus commanded the body of Christ to lay down their lives in order that we love our, our friends as he loved us. Paul identified his body, he identified this, the body of Christ, by saying, and they that are Christ have, well here, just go there, go to Galatians 5.24, I quote him, but I need to let you know where I'm going. Look at Galatians 5.24. You know, I had one of my daughters call my wife and I today, and she said, oh, dad, it's just so much about obedience. Man's just, wow, it's just dad serious about obedience. Dad's serious about eternal life. Amen? Look what Galatians 5.24 says. And now those who have belonged, or those who belong to Jesus, those who belong to Christ Jesus. Mark this stuff in your Bible. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. They have what? Crucified the flesh. With what? Its passions and its desires. They have crucified the flesh. Their fleshly desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the animals, probably like they have, they crucified it. Now look at Ephesians 5.13. But all things that are approved are made manifest by what? The light. So in other words, all things are exposed by the light. For, all, for everything that becomes visible is what? Light. How can God free you and bring you into the light unless he can expose the darkness that you're operating in? We have to realize we've been caught in the holiness, guys. Look at Philippians chapter 2. We're going to look at Philippians 2. We'll look at 12 and 13 and 15. Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Oops. I hit the wrong button. Sorry. Philippians chapter 2. Amen. No, we'll do it that way. Do it this way. Okay, look what it says. Philippians chapter 2. Amen. Verse 12. So then, my beloved, just as you have also obeyed, or just as you have always obeyed, excuse me, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. 
work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, both the will and to work for what? His what? His good pleasure. Amen. And I'm just going to go on and read all the way through 14 through 15. Do not do all things without grumbling and disputing so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach in the midst, look at here, in the midst of what? A crooked and perverse generation among whom you appeared as what? Lights in the what? The world. You think people want to see you walking in the light and they choose to stay in the darkness and you think they're going to want to be around you? No, you convict them. See, God has empowered you to overcome the world because he gave you his spirit, he gave you mercy, he gave you grace, he gave you the fruits of the spirit. God has given you and I apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the edifying of the body, to the outcome of the unity of faith and the knowledge of the Son of God that we can be what? Perfect children, mature children in the fullness of God. But we have to do it the way God said. Amen. This is the same way, guys. Let me say this. This is the same way that Christ fulfilled the, fulfills the law in us. His spirit leads us to become doers of the law. Because we have a new heart. A pure heart. With new fruit, fruit. And the fruit of love. Amen. We're no longer lawbreakers. But we fulfill the law. So now we walk. That way we walk in the protection of God. And the blessings. Because we love God with all of our heart and we love our neighbors ourselves. We have ceased from our old own works and have entered into the rest of God. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law. Listen, from the law of sin and death that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. So God protects us, I'm going to say it again, and is blessing us because we what? love God with all of our heart and we love our neighbor as ourselves. So we cease from our own works. And here's how we enter into the rest of God. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law, now watch this, of sin and death because sin brings death. So why would I want to walk in the sin of the world so I can receive the same penalty the world gets, which is death? So he's freed us from the law of sin and death. That we now, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. How could the righteousness be fulfilled in us? Because the Spirit of God walks in the righteousness of God and then comes within me. And I walk in the righteousness of God which fulfilled the law of God and then sin and death can't work in me. If you're not being fulfilled, if you're not fulfilling the law of God by the Spirit of God, you're being judged by that same law. And you can say you don't agree with it, but just hang in there, keep the stiff upper lip, let the rough end drag, and see how things work out for you. I bet you they don't work out. You don't just you can you can fulfill it. You can't fulfill it by just joining a religious structure, finding some new doctrines, manifesting some spiritual gifts, or doing some good works for Jesus, etc., etc. That doesn't work. Because look at Romans chapter 8, look at 2 through 4. Look at Romans 8, chapter uh, verse 2 through 4, look what it says. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has freed me from the law of sin and death. And watch 3. For what the law could not do. Amen. Weak as it was through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh as an offering for sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Listen, listen to what you read. Please, brothers. It says that Jesus condemned sin in the flesh. So if I'm like Christ Jesus and you're like Christ Jesus and we're the sons and the daughters of God, then that means the same power that was in Christ Jesus is in you and me. And now we have the power by the Spirit of God to condemn the sin that was within us by the Spirit of God, and we condemn sin in the flesh just like Jesus condemned it. 
and you can condemn it, but the only way you condemn it is by crucifying it and taking it out of your life. Amen? Verse 3 again. For what the law could not do was weak as it was through the flesh, God did send his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, he condemned sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. Please circle that in your Bible, that it might be fulfilled in us, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And if you walk according to the Spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, and you will walk in the peace of God. You will walk in the mercy of God. You will walk in the grace of God. You will walk in the power of God. You'll walk in the healing of God because you'll be the sons and daughters of God. Glory be to God. There's a lot of God in all that. Amen. All right, I'm going to I'm going to back off here a little bit. I'd be going on. I mean, I get in the word. I don't want to get out. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God forevermore. Amen. All right. I'm in here with one more chapter. Go over to Galatians 5, 16 uh, through 18. Glory be to God forevermore. Galatians 5, 16 through 18. This is all over your Bible, man. The body of Christ it, it needs to do what it's supposed to do to get the benefits it's asked for. Amen. Whoo, glory to God. Verse chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. But I say, walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. Mark it in your Bible. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not. I said, you will not. Mark it in your Bible. You will not carry out the desires of the flesh. So if you want to know if you're walking in the flesh, if you, you want to know how you'll know, you'll be carrying out the desires of the flesh. But if you walk in the Spirit, you'll crucify the desires of the flesh, which means you'll fulfill the law of God. So you'll be walking in the freedom of God. You'll walk in the power of God. But not only that, you'll walk in immunity. Hear me. You'll walk in immunity. You'll walk in a place with God that man cannot walk without God. And you'll do the things that God tells you you can do because it's God working through man, doing the things that man cannot do, that only God can do, to God be the glory forever. And only God can transform a man. Religion doesn't transform anything. Look up religion in the Latin. It means to be taken back in the bondage, not be freed from it. Amen? Anyway, back to verse 16, Galatians 5, 16 and 8 through 18. But, but I say, walk in the Spirit and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh, for the flesh sets its desires against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, for these are, what? In opposition to one another. So that you may not do the things that you please. You may not. It doesn't matter. You cannot do the things your flesh likes. You can't do it. If you do it, you'll get the penalty of it. You can't do the things the flesh likes, or you'll get the penalty of it. Amen? Listen, verse 18. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. I'm going to read this one more time in the Amplified. Amen? I'm going to read it one more time, okay? And we're going to end after this verse. Amen? But I say, walk habitually in the Holy Spirit. Seek Him Seek him and be guided by him. And then you will certainly not carry out the desires of the sinful nature, which opposes, amen? It opposes God's regulations and his precepts. For the sinful nature, nature has its desire, which is opposed to the spirit of, and the desire of the Spirit opposes the sinful nature. For these two, what? The sinful nature and the Spirit are in direct opposition to each other, continuously in conflict. That's your warring in the Spirit, guys. People ask me about spiritual warfare. 
That is spiritual warfare. When God wants you to do this and the enemy wants you to do that, the war you're in is the war in your members because one part of you by God wants to do it and one part of your flesh wants to do the opposite of it. And that's the war. That's spiritual warfare. Some of the stuff that people call spiritual warfare is not, but that is true spiritual warfare. And whomever you present yourself to be a slave to will be your master, whether it be the flesh leading to death or the spirit leading to life. The flesh leading you to sin or the spirit leading you not to sin. There's where your worry is. Amen. All right. Let me go on and finish this out here. Amen. Uh, finish up verse 17. For the sinful nature has its desire, which is an, an a, 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 a opposition to the spirit and the desires of the spirit in opposition to the sinful nature. For these two. Amen. The sinful nature and the flesh are in the spirit are in direct opposition to each other, continuously in conflict, so that you as believers do not always, do not always do whatever good thing you want to do. But if you are guided by and led by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Let me explain this as we finish up tonight. You're not subject to the law because you're fulfilling the law you're not subject to it anymore because it has no power over you. The only time that the law has power over a Christian is when the Christian is breaking it. Hear me. The only time that the law of God has power over a Christian is when the Christian is breaking the law of God because the flesh always breaks God's law and the spirit will always fulfill God's law and you have to know which one you're in and believe me you will because you will not walk in peace of the spirit of God if you're breaking the laws of God because your peace will go immediately if something's not right in your life and that in itself is grace my brothers and my sisters. We'll start back tomorrow night. Amen. I hope you're getting something out of what I'm trying to teach you. I want you to know because I told you two, that two nights ago about mastering what? Your atmosphere. I talked to you last night and a totally thing about having to be uh, spiritual blindness. Okay. When you're blind to the truth, you can't walk in the truth. But here's what's even more dangerous. When you're not blind to the truth and you choose not to walk into it. Paul said it'd be better never known the way of the gospel. I should say Peter said this. It'd be better, better to have never known the way to known it and went away. See, there's a way that seems right. That's a religious way. It isn't right. It still leads you to destruction. You're still falling under sickness and disease and being, being torn apart by the powers of darkness because you're not being taught how to defeat an enemy. God wants you to know how to defeat an enemy. And then he empowers you to defeat him, but you must choose to defeat him. You and I must choose, brothers and sisters. Amen? Those in the true church are not under the law. Amen? That's because they're led by the Spirit of God to put to death the deeds of the flesh so they can be perfected in love to fulfill the law because in fulfilling the law, you are walking in love, you fulfill the law. Amen? That's the church which is we're truly talking about. That way you're no longer under the judgment or the curse of the law. The false church, which follows a form of godliness, has become a dwelling place of demons. Because she transgresses the law instead of fulfilling the law of love. That's why you got two churches brought up today. You got a harlot and you got a real one. You got the fake and the real. You've always had the fake and the real. The question that you have to ask yourself, which one are you? How much of you is fake and how much of you is real? How much of you is following God and how much of you is following the flesh? Only you know that for yourself. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you, I have, to, I have to examine myself to see if I be in the faith. I examine myself. Where are you at, Teddy, with God? Are you walking in the spirit of God or are you walking in the flesh of man? Because the flesh of man will be destroyed by God. But the spirit of God will be renewed and lifted up by God. Amen? Anyway, God, God loves you, man. And I love you, brothers and sisters. I hope that I've been able to help you in something tonight. I pray that you come to a greater understanding. Please go back and listen to the message. I, I'll go back and continue on from where I'm at right now. Because I'm trying to get people to realize that you're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. But you have to overcome the right way in order to reap the benefits of God. And so do I. Amen. But God loves you. 
I pray God keep you. Uh, if you have any questions, please, you can inbox Janet or me. You can call me. A lot of you have our phone number. If you don't need it, ask somebody on here. They'll give it to you. I'll be more help, happy to help you in any way I can to get to the next level in God that you want to get to. But one thing about God, you've got to be real with him. Amen. So until tomorrow night, may God bless you and keep you. May his light shine upon you. My wife and I speak blessings over you. And remember that Jesus loves you. Until tomorrow night, guys, God bless you.